What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. My name is Amira. Hold up. Let me hit a gas real quick. Last night, I was drunk. I almost crashed that wheel. I had to ask her how to ass open. Got this hay in my car, but I might smash that wheel. And I'm so hot on. So what provoked me to take a DNA test was because I don't know too much about my family history. So I do know that my grandparents came here from Bangladesh when they were very young. So they were only in their 20s and they've been in Canada a lot longer than they've been in Bangladesh. Both of my parents were born and raised in Toronto and I was born here obviously as well. Both sides of my family are Bengali and my dad's side, I heard that he has a little bit of Iranian in him and along the line somewhere Chinese so or something east asian i'm not 100 percent sure but besides that all i really know is that we're bengali and before that i don't really know where my family comes from so i was always just really interested in where my ancestors originated from before bangladesh because it's it is a very new country so i wanted to basically know before that where we come from i did a lot of research before choosing my dna heritage i went back and forth between ancestry.com and my dna and I did, I watched a lot of videos, a lot of videos like this one, a lot of reviews. I visited different websites. I listened to a lot of people's stories and I finally made the decision on my DNA heritage. So everywhere I looked, my DNA was ranked either first or second place on the website. Usually its competitor was ancestry.com. And I think the other one was 23andMe. Those three were all very popular. So the reason why I went to my DNA was because I was simply looking for what ethnicity my family originated from. Ancestry.com also tells you a medical history and it lets you know if there's any illnesses within your family, but it's more expensive because it does accommodate that factor. So I was really just interested in like what my background is, like what my ethnicity is. I was going through different websites and then I saw that uh, my Heritage DNA was actually doing a promotion and it was probably one of its biggest promotions. It was $100 off the DNA kit. So usually it's about $150. I got it for, a, well, the promotion price was $60. So I used Honey and I found $20 off, which is the entire cost of shipping because shipping is very expensive for this stuff. Like, I don't know why, but it's so expensive. So then I got another $20 off. So I basically got the entire kit for under $50. So that was basically my selling point. I was like, okay, this is the cheaper one and it's also ranked number one or number two on most websites. So I'm definitely going with my heritage. I wanted to know the legitness of it. You know what I mean? Like I watched a lot of videos where identical twins took two different tests where siblings from the same parents all took tests and they all got identical results. So if you have siblings where you share both the same mother and father, I would definitely recommend just splitting the test. I didn't split it with my siblings because like I got it for like less than $50. So I didn't really like, I didn't mind paying for it. If I bought it for $200, I would definitely split it with my siblings because you're all gonna get the same results anyways. The way they're gonna test it is they test your saliva to read your DNA and then they identify which part of the world people with that DNA either originated from or where people with that DNA are around the world. It goes by geographical regions rather than countries more so. What I feel like it'll be is I feel like it'll show somewhere to do with South Asia and maybe even India because even though I'm not Indian, it's just that area, Bangladesh, India and Pakistan are all so close together. I feel like I'll have some type of Iranian in there. So Iran falls in the Middle East and in South Asia. It's kind of like both of them. Some people consider it Middle East, some people consider it south asia so it just depends and i feel like i'll definitely have some east asian in there whether it be chinese or a different type of east asian just because that's what i've heard that i have in my family After looking at my results, I'm definitely surprised about the indigenous Amazonian. That surprises me the most. Just because uh, my first year of university, I took a course which was indigenous Amazonian religions. 
which I found a huge coincidence because I had no idea back then that I had any of that in me. And now that I know, it's crazy to think that I spent an entire semester researching and studying some of my ancestors. I also didn't realize that I had over 3% Filipino in me. So we thought it was, my family thought I think that it was mostly Chinese, but it's actually Filipino, Indonesian, and Malaysian. What was annoying is the fact that they just told me I was 91% South Asian because it's like, I expected that, but it's like, okay, like, I don't really need a test to know that. Like, obviously I'm 91% South Asian. What I found weird is that they could tell me that I was 2.1% Nepalian, but they couldn't pinpoint anywhere else in South Asia, which I found very interesting. Like, if anything, I thought they would have been able to pinpoint somewhere near Bangladesh, like closer to Bangladesh. Um, but instead that was the specific that came out of it. I had no idea I had any ancestry in Nepal. And I'm also very surprised that nothing about Iran really came up. Like they just said South Asian, which could include a little bit of Iran, but Iran is more in the Middle East and nothing in the Middle East came up. That's like a known fact on my dad's side of the family that we have some Iranian in us. So that surprised me as well. I still believe it because all these countries are like borders that humans created. So I still do believe that we probably have some Iranian in us, but I'm gonna go with the test like because you know it's like they read my DNA yeah I was happy with the process so the way it worked was they sent me the DNA kit and it took about a month to get to my house it took a pretty long time and I did a swab test and I swabbed both of my cheeks and then I sent it back to them it took probably another three weeks to a month to to get to the lab and then it took another three weeks to a month for them to actually come up with my results so it's about a, a two month to three month process but it was definitely worth it because I was actually wondering this stuff for so long and I'll list all the coupon codes I used and the website I used. I'll have all the links down below, but I was just curious for such a long time and it definitely is a credible source. I spent so much time researching it. Another cool factor about my heritage DNA is that it linked me to somebody who's apparently my third cousin. Basically what it does is if anybody else takes the test with my heritage DNA and your DNA is matched, that means that they link you together and they give you the option to contact that person. So this is a woman with like a very Spanish name and I'm not Spanish clearly. So I found that very interesting that we have a link somewhere and we're actually close enough to be third cousins. So being third cousins would mean that you set, you share a set of great grandparents, I believe it is, which is crazy because she has like a Spanish name. Outside of my large family, there's of course so many people who I don't know about. So it was really cool to see that I have the option of contacting her if I want. My Heritage DNA does provide a breakdown with the percentages of where your ancestral DNA can be found, as well as a map where the regions are highlighted. All in all, I would recommend it because it was a really cool experience for me. And if you decide to do the same, then please leave it in the comments below what your ancestral background is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Hold up, let me hit the gas real quick. Last night I was drunk, I almost crashed.